welcome everyone to the People's House. Mr. Speaker, will you please call the House to order? The bill is passed. We want to make sure that we make New York a more affordable place to live, a better place to raise a family. Welcome to Assembly Update. I am Assembly Member Angelo Santa Barbara, representing the 111th Assembly District, which includes Montgomery County, parts of Albany County, and parts of Schenectady County. Today on the show, we are going to be talking about the Center for Disability Services. Uh, we just recently uh, participated in a telethon uh, to, to benefit this organization. And joining us, I have two guests, uh, Greg Sorrentino, who is the Chief Operating Officer and Chief Financial Officer. Yes. Welcome, Greg. Thank and you. Donna Lampkin who is the Chief Program Officer. Yes, welcome, welcome, Donna, and thank you both thank for you. being on the show. Thank, thank you. Um, maybe we can start off with a, a little bit about uh, the organization, the background, and how you became involved. Uh, Greg, why don't we start with you? Well, I, I became involved in 1993. I, um, I was in the public accounting arena, and I, uh, the center was, at the time, the Center for the Disabled was a, uh, was a client of, of the firm I worked with, and uh, I was looking for a career change and came to the center and, and honestly it's been uh, it's been a fantastic 20-year run now really enjoyed it and uh, it's, it's helped me grow and hopefully you know the agency has grown at the same time so it's been a great partnership excellent excellent and thank you again for for joining us here today and uh, Donna uh, let's hear a little bit about your background and uh, how you became involved my story is really quite different from Greg's because um, I was a, I'm a social worker by profession, and I had been teaching at the School of Social Work at SUNY Albany um, 37 years ago now, almost 37 years ago, and uh, my daughter was born, who was born with Down syndrome, and I really had had no experience at all with people with disabilities. I think people of my era, you know, grew up at a time when people with disabilities just weren't um, really part of our communities, and so I'd had really no experience at all, and, and it's, um, it seems sad to say that as a social worker, I really also knew nothing about the field of disability. So it was a very new world for me. And um, of course, I eventually um, you know, decided that I needed to switch my career and uh, start to work in the field of disability. Started as a two hour a week consulting social worker at what was then Residential Opportunities Incorporated. And uh, after a very short time, came on uh, full time. And uh, then the ROI. Um, merged with the center in 2000. The, the Center for Disability Services that you see today is really the result of a lot of um, several different organizations coming together and Residential Opportunities was one of them in 2000. So I, at the time of the merger I was the uh, Associate Executive Director of ROI and moved over to the center and ran the Chief Program Officer. That's great. That's so fantastic. Very different. Yeah. So 30 years. It's been 30 year run for me. So and Greg's uh, well, a big. Greg's it's, it's, uh, and 20 is a long time as well. Yes, a very long. Is, is yes, longer. And, and uh, yeah. but we, uh, I want to thank you both for the work that you're doing in our communities, um, and for being here to share a little bit of information. Um, let's talk about the the Center for Disability mm -hmm. Services. Uh, we hear, we've seen it on TV. We've saw, we've seen the logo. We've heard the name. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just for the audience at home, what what would be if we had to define a mission? What would the mission be? Well, the mission of the center is to enable and empower people with disabilities to live healthy and enriched lives. It sounds pretty simple and straightforward, but it takes a lot of uh, resources and a lot of energy and a lot of skill and expertise to really make that happen because we serve about 15,000 people a year. So, uh, you know, that's um, And we got some of those stats uh, during the, uh, the telethon yes. that we just, uh, we just mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago here we had uh, and that's the that's your biggest uh, event one of your biggest fundraisers yes, yes. Uh, yeah. and that was uh, that was a special anniversary of that fundraiser I think or, or uh, I don't know how many years it's been going now but four I think it's 54 so 54, 54. And, and that's that's quite a long time it as well certainly is. Um, it certainly is and uh, that uh, showed uh, how much the community supports this organization Absolutely. Uh, and the number of people that called in and participated mm -hmm. uh, and all led to its success uh, it was wonderful to see the community come together for such a great mm -hmm. cause, a great organization. Um, it's one of the things I think that we really are, um, rely upon and are so appreciative of, the fact that this, this community has been just tremendously supportive of, of the center and of the work that, uh, that we do there. And uh, the, you know, the telethon is one way uh, mm -hmm. to participate, uh, but certainly throughout the year there's other things going on, uh, and I know you uh, have a, a website, a terrific website, mm -hmm. uh, with all sorts of information that we'll give out in a moment here. 
but what are some of the, we talked about the mission, what are some of the programs, what are some of the services uh, that people at home might, uh, might relate to or might, uh, might, might affect our residents? Well, we have a, um, we have a health clinic, um, which we have primary care, um, dental services, um, we have neurology clinic, we actually have an MS care center. I think there's a lot about the center that a lot of people don't really um, <coughs> really think about or really know, actually. Um, and then we also have adult day programs for people with developmental disabilities and traumatic brain injury. Um, we have employment opportunities for people with disabilities. We have, um, of course, residential programs. We have about, I think, 54 separate residences that are scattered all throughout the communities of the Capital District where we provide um, supervised living so people are fully part of the community who need some support in order to do that. We have in-home services that we bring to people in their own homes, um, in their families' homes, and uh, we provide service coordination now for about 1,400 different individuals and their families. Um, so I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not being exhaustive in what I'm saying. We have a pre-sort mail business um, our buses, I think you see our vans and our buses all yeah. throughout the Capital District. We have a very extensive um, network of transportation, and which of course now we're able to provide, we do maintenance of course on our own vehicles, and now we're able to provide if you want, would you like your oil changed? You can come to our, um, really come to our facility in South Pearl Street in Albany and we'll change your oil for a fair fee, of course, but you know, we will. And uh, so I think we have uh, a durable medical equipment um, business and we also have a company known as well now it's called we just changed the name to accessibility no, center for access and mobility yeah, services center for, in which we serve we were able to provide um, come to a home and be able to help people make it be a fully accessible home we can build an addition to a home that would be accessible to really enable people to stay in their own homes as well as be able to do some adaptations to vehicles and I'm probably leaving out well, I think I think the the part when you look at the center, and I think what's changed since I've been there, um, it really ties to. I think the, the concept, the, the preconceived notion of the center is that you, you have a child who's born with a disability, and then certainly we have many of the of the people that we serve were born with some disability, but a number of people we serve have acquired a disability at some point mm -hmm. in their life, and I think why we think we're so important to this community. When we started this business a couple of years ago of, of making adaptations to people's homes, you know, I, we went through it in my own home. When my father, we needed a stair chair to get him from the first floor to the second floor. I mean, there's a lot of different things, you know, a roll-in shower mm -hmm. where, you, you, you know, you, at some point in your life something happens, a disabling condition. I have a sister-in-law who was diagnosed with MS in her 20s. It has certainly changed her life as she's gotten older and, and needs certain modifications to their homes to, to, uh, to allow them to continue to stay in their home, live comfortably in their home. And, and so I think we've, we've adapted along the way to provide more and more services. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier we were talking with, with Mitchell about our camp uh, out, in, mm -hmm. out in Glenville. Mm -hmm. And it's a little piece of the Adirondacks on, uh, over in Glenville and where kids can go. And, you know, and some, many kids, depending on their conditions, won't be able to ever go to a summer camp, won't be able to mm -hmm. you know, have the overnight experience. And what we allow them to do is have the, the camp experience. There's actually a camp, um, there's a nature trail, you have the river running it's right by it, accessible completely accessible. Trail. We have a pool uh, that, that they can, you know, it's accessible. We have uh, a miniature golf course. I mean, we have different things throughout the, the camping area. And it's a, it's, it feels like you're in the Adirondacks and you're about a two minute walk to the main road. So. And, and that's really great that it is the accessibility part of it mm -hmm. uh, is something that uh, is really important because uh, you know if 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 those features aren't there uh, then it's very hard for people to get around uh, and it's kind of off limits. Mm -hmm. uh, right. It is. It wouldn't, it's not accessible to them. Exactly. Exactly. It's, and I think though one of the important parts of something like camp and another service that we provide is that also provides respite for families. We have so many families who never in a million years thought that their child would be able to go to camp, but they also thought, never thought in a million years that they would feel safe and comfortable to have their child stay someplace so that they also get a break. Um, and camp is actually for children and adults because the disability, most of the disabilities that we work with, they don't, they don't change, you know? So it's, um, they're not gonna go away. You're not gonna be cured of it. So for families to be able to get respite, which as I said, is another service that we offer, you know, is, is, 
in addition to camp, we offer respite services. Also, respite actually at our, we have a pediatric nursing home, St. Margaret's is part of the center. And uh, we're very proud of St. Margaret's, really. And one of the, we do offer respite services there for, for families who have a child who needs a, um, that they need to take a break. But you can't, you know, if you have a child who requires a nursing home level of care that you're providing at home, it's really hard to get a babysitter to take care of your child. So we provide respite there. And one of the things, if I might add about St. Margaret's that I think is really interesting, I think a lot of people in the community are familiar with St. Margaret's as a place for babies, you know, who have obviously very, very serious medical <coughs> conditions. That, um, and that th but I think people have this picture, which is really how it used to be, that when children went to St. Margaret's, they stayed at St. Margaret's, you know, really until they passed away. They got great care until they passed away. And actually, we're very proud of the fact that last year, um, we actually have a, a now a unit where we're able to take care of children in, on ventilators. But um, we had 22 children who came to St. Margaret, stayed at St. Margaret's for a period of time, and were able to, to go back to live with their families, which we feel just is a, an incredible accomplishment. It really is. And really yeah, a yeah. wonderful, wonderful, um, it's a wonderful thing for the, for the whole yeah. family and for the community, I mean, that you don't have to, you know, St. Margaret's is there if you need it, regardless of what right. that level is. But and it's you great can to also hear. bring your child home. Really. It, it's great to hear about mm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. op, uh, organizations like that really making a difference mm -hmm. in our communities. Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, a few locations, but I know in upstate New York in particular, you have uh, these services are provided uh, at various locations. A lot of them. Uh, so yeah, 80, yeah. Over 80 locations. Yeah, okay, over 80 locations. And yeah. I think I saw that somewhere, it might have been yeah. on your website, that it, it's uh, throughout all of upstate New York. There's uh, services that can be uh, um, in, in all, all those locations that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, if someone needed to, thought they may need some services, may need some help, what's the best way to, to go about doing it or contacting? They can go to our website and you can send, you know, you can write right on there that you're looking for some assistance or I believe my phone number is on the, um, okay, coming we'll up put, on the screen. Yeah, and, we'll put uh, that up in a second. Know, and really people can feel free to call me. I talk to families every day who are looking for services and we can direct them. Okay, I mean if people yeah. want to call and maybe they're not sure, they sure. can ask a few questions, they can stop in. Um, absolutely. And uh, have a conversation and see if it's right for them. Absolutely, yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, you, uh, you also mentioned, uh, I want to go back just a second, you mentioned residential mm -hmm. uh, earlier on in the show. Mm -hmm. How, that's something that's been, uh, been talked about, uh, the residential part of the services. How, how has that evolved? And I know that uh, oftentimes you hear about a shortage uh, in that area. Is there, how is that, how is that part of the program working? Well, we feel there's a shortage. In yeah, and that's what you hear. You hear there's not enough, right? There's not we enough. Think, well, we <clears throat> certainly think that there's not enough. Um, you know, we, we support people who uh, really require, they require support. It's that they require all different levels. I mean, we, we serve people who have some very, very profound multiple disabilities that would be obvious, you know, to anybody who saw them or talked with them. And then we also serve people who have less obvious disabilities but require um, supervision in order to be safe. You have people who require um, medication that they're not able to manage themselves, and so they they are they do require um, a level of supervision in their living situation, but that also allows them the freedom to be as independent as they can possibly be and really live as we say full participating lives in their communities. And um, you know, right now, you know, obviously with the state budgets and with the overall approach, I think that it seems to be. Um, Coming more prevalent, um, there's a, a lack of new development for um, individuals who require that kind of assistance. Um, so it is a, it's a, I think it's a growing problem and something that we're going to see uh, more and more become an issue. Is the pressures? Well, it's two things. I think one is certainly pressures come to families that they're not able necessarily to continue to provide the kind of 24-hour um, um, support and assistance that someone may need. Um, but also, we've actually come just now through a time where there was an expectation that somebody who has a developmental disability would, as they became an adult, be able to move just as Greg and you and I did. Um, I assume you don't live with your parents, you know, moved out of their parents, or maybe you do, but I don't. But, um, moved out of their parents' home. My children, you know, both of my children moved out of my home at a time when they emerged into adulthood. My son moved on, went to college and moved on. My daughter, who the young woman who has the has Down syndrome, 
Um, she moved on because she was able to move into a residence that could support her back in 2000, and she has a full adult life that is really independent of her life of, that was of, with me, um, but is really no different than her brother. Um, you know, I go to her house, she comes back to my house, she goes to her brother's, you know, she's a, a young adult living in the community. Um, but I think that now it's really more shifted to people are expected to pretty much live with their parents um, until they feel that they can't do it. Now, that's probably a little dramatic characterization, and there certainly are opportunities for people to move on. Our concern is for the people who need the higher level of supervision and assistance that those opportunities would not be there. That's and, what our concern you, is. And it's really, and you mentioned this, it's about independence, being as independent as possible. Yeah, it is. And that's a very important component of, it is. of this, a very important piece. Uh, so to have that independence, right. to be able to live on your own with the minimal amount of supervision, right. uh, of need? assistance, uh, is really important to people. It is. And work. And, and, yes, and, and to work be able is to the work. other piece. Yes, we go have ahead. A, we have a large work component. We, we have a, what we call our commercial services operation. Mm -hmm. Those pre-sort mailing, we're soon to be doing printing and inserting. And, of, of documents and it's and and you know we're down there a lot and um, actually Donna's daughter that's where she works she and celebrated 10 years <laughs> oh congratulations that's, that's great really I'll wonderful. tell you when you go wonderful. in there it's oh. not about it's not about money it's not about um, you know you wish the rest of society would want to work as much and, and appreciate the ability to work as much as the individuals that we have that are employed there and, and, and other places throughout the community we have and, and they function at different levels. And the nice thing about the operation we have is that we have work to do regardless of the level of